So it's almost time for a new release of 8-bit Unity. Uh, at the moment on the website, uh, 8-bit Unity 0.4 is still available for download, but the release 0.5 is really due within days. And if you cannot wait until then, it's always possible to go to GitHub and to clone the repository. Um, it contains basically everything except the packaged uh, emulators and some of the tools like the sprite editor and GIMP. Uh, those are only available in the full download, uh, which will, like I said, come within a few days. So what's new in this uh, latest version of uh, 8-bit Unity? Uh, first of all, uh, support for the NES Famicom as well as support for the Atari 400 and 800, uh, but that would be only in the 48K RAM uh, upgrade version. You will not be able to run 8-bit Unity on a 16K uh, base model. Uh, the number of uh, platforms which are uh, supported by the 8-bit hub has also been increased, as well as the uh, Auric and Lynx, which were already supported in uh, version 0.4, I have now added support for the Atari 8-bit systems, the C64, and the NES. Another networking device uh, is now supported also on the C64, and that's the Ultimate 64 2 and 2 Plus uh, device. Uh, there are thousands of people using this cartridge out there, so I'm sure they will appreciate uh, this add-on. And finally, this is uh, an improvement to one of the tech demo. 8-bit Goblin, as well as a new tech demo, uh, which makes uh, programming networked multiplayer games much easier, and I've called this tech demo EasyNet. So here is a quick overview of the implementation of 8-bit Unity for the NES Famicom. Uh, of course, all the uh, usual uh, features are available, bitmaps, sprites, character maps, music and networking and so on, albeit with uh, some limitations uh, because of the way the NES video system works. Um, for now, there's only a choice of four colors to be displayed uh, for bitmaps and char maps. Uh, in theory, the system can support four times four colors, uh, but there's all kinds of limitations on, as to where sets of four colors can be used. Uh, so future version will try to improve a little bit, but for now, uh, you can see the result uh, below, uh, the bottom. It's not too bad, and uh, what can be seen is that games like 8-bit slicks, they run very fast and very smooth on the NES, uh, because the processor is uh, a little bit faster uh, than other 8-bit uh, computers of the same era. Now, regarding the implementation of 8-bit Unity for the Atari 400-800, uh, we went down from 64K of RAM on the XLXC to 48K, so some sacrifices had to be made. Uh, 8K could be recovered by using a single bitmap frame instead of two. Uh, so basically now you have a single frame of uh, four colors, whereas before two times four colors could be interleaved to produce extra colors. Uh, the way in which those extra colors are recovered is by using a checkerboard effect. So if you look at the bottom, you can see on the left side, it looks a little bit like a chessboard uh, to kind of give you a sense of what uh, would be the uh, mix of two colors, uh, which you can see is realized perfectly on the XLXC by uh, flickering two frames at uh, 50 or 60 Hertz. The other 8K of RAM was recovered by, for now, uh, disabling all the music playback. Uh, so we will see in the future if it's possible to optimize the code and uh, reinstate music playback uh, for this 48k version on the Atari. I mentioned previously that uh, the number of platforms uh, supported by the 8-bit hub is ever increasing. You can see at the bottom now we are up to uh, six platforms supported. Well, the Apple is still currently under work, under, under construction, but that is coming very soon. And what is very unique about the 8-bit hub is that uh, you buy this one accessory, and from there on, all you need really is one cable for each 
of the uh, computers that you own and you can just take that one little box and you can connect it uh, on your Commodore, or on your Lynx, on your NES and you can enjoy uh, the same 8-bit Unity experience if you're a programmer or the same gaming experience if you are playing a game that was produced with 8-bit Unity like for example uh, 8-bit Slicks or the 8-bit OS uh, which allows you to do some uh, activities with the mouse and really from here on uh, I hope that the number of applications based on the 8-bit Hub and 8-bit Unity com combination uh, will keep on increasing it's a very uh, unique ecosystem and it's uh, facilitating a lot the life of programmers uh, who want to bring uh, this online aspect uh, to game programming. So you might be wondering how does the 8-bit hub connect uh, to the NES and Famicom? So there is a, a DB15 cable uh, which is uh, uh, plugs directly into the, the front port of uh, classic Famicom or the side port of a top loader Famicom. The uh, NES, uh, as it was uh, distributed in the US and Europe, doesn't have this DB15 connector. Instead, it has a bottom expansion port. And if you purchase an ENIO board or you make one yourself, it's possible to go from this uh, edge connector uh, to a DB15 plug and then you plug your 8-bit hub in there and off you go. So now let's take a look at some of the improvements in terms of tech demo uh, in this version of 8-bit Unity. 8-bit uh, Goblin has been simplified, uh, whereas before some of the scripts were still hard-coded. Uh, we now have a proper scripting engine that only really requires bitmaps and text files uh, to create scenes. For example, here is a one scene in 8-bit Goblin. Uh, it consists of two bitmap, a base bitmap and one which has uh, the modified portion of the screen. And once you have uh, selected those areas to extract as so-called uh, chunks, you can see on the left uh, we can simply create uh, a list of uh, interactable objects with their coordinates. Uh, we can set up some triggers that is what happens when I click here or when I go here. Uh, those triggers can then uh, create modifiers. So uh, an interactable object will be modified in its uh, uh, properties and so on. So it's a easy to understand uh, text file format. And it comes with a little Python compiler to compile it to a binary. And so what I hope is that with this uh, much more simplified approach, uh, people will be motivated to try and create more point-and-click uh, adventure type games using the uh, 8-bit Unity framework. And uh, if you have questions, if you don't understand how it works, don't hesitate to go on the forum or on Discord and you can ask me questions directly. I'll be very happy to help uh, uh, to get you started with this tool. And next, there is also a, a new tech demo uh, that's a, that demonstrates a new and simple API for programming online multiplayer games. So what's going on at the bottom, I've got uh, two sessions of Altera set up. And in the first session, I am hosting uh, a networked game. And with the right session, I'm joining the room created by the first Altera. So I have to type in the ID and pass, which were automatically generated. And now what you can see is that the player on the right is moving and its motion is reflected on the left and vice versa. So this uh, new API is super easy. There's only four functions, easy host, easy join, easy send, and easy receive. So with easy host, the 8-bit Unity server will create for you a room and give you an ID and pass, which you can share with your friends. Then uh, their application will use easy join and they will enter the ID and pass. And then you can exchange data with easy send and easy receive in a way that is quite similar to the way um, the comlinks operated. You send data 
everybody gets a copy of that data, yourself included, and you take it from there and you can take a turn at exchanging data and so on. Again, this is meant to make life easier for programmers. Uh, in previous, previous versions, you would have had to set up your own server. Here, you don't have to do any of that. Much, much easier to use. So that's it really for this preview of 8-bit Unity 0.5. It's coming very soon, literally days away. And if you would like to support uh, this effort, you're more than welcome to uh, subscribe to uh, Patreon and become a patron. Uh, it's possible to support me for as little as $5 a month. And where does that money go? Well, it goes in maintaining the website and also maintaining all the old equipment that I need for testing and making sure that what you get is going to work on different versions of 8-bit system, uh, whether it's an Atari XL, an Atari XE, uh, an NES, and so on. Eh? So your support, as always, is very much welcome, uh, and it helps motivate me and keep up this uh, project uh, in the foreseeable future. All right, that's all for now. Speak to you soon. Bye.